Hey there, welcome back. I'm gonna get the game up here. There it is. Alright. So, I'm gonna start a new game. I basically just went through some of the basics. We had a, a lot of boring Excel analysis. And then we, uh... Alright, let's go for real. So, um... <clears throat> The fighter is a great class. I don't have any f find any fault with the fighter, to be quite honest with you. I think it's just good all around. The um, the rogue, I'm not as convinced on. And so one of the things that I like to do with this game is um, do my luck picking elsewhere. I am sold on the bard debate. The bard is such an interesting class. Um, the bard has lockpicks, and so the bard can serve as your thief, and it also has the music, and so it's basically serving as your psionist, psionic character, because um, every, like I said, every instrument that it plays is really a spell. So when you saw that short playthrough in the first video, the it had the sleep spell, for example. The problem with bards is that their spells are very specific to the instruments they have. It's not a very large um, choice. But um, if you remember with the uh, mage, um, you had those little circles that were green, yellow, orange, you know, and even red, <clears throat> which basically meant, you know, you had to choose what power level you wanted to do. And then you also had a probability that was going to fail. Well, with the bard, there is still a possible chance that it'll fail. Um, and so your music skill is going to play into that. Um, but the power level is always maximum. And this is something that's really deep in the forums if you start to really get into some research. So with the bard, every time it casts a spell, it's at maximum power level based on the level of the bard. And so it's as good as any magic user in the game at whatever spells it uses. So, so the Bard is a fantastic hybrid character that does both the magic and the lockpicking. <clears throat> now, um, if we're talking about lockpicking, of course, like I said, the, uh, the Rogue is one of them. Uh, the Gadgeteer is another. Um, <clears throat> the, the funny thing is, is I have an engineering degree, personally, so I always have, like, in my heart, I want to play the Gadgeteer. But I don't like the Gadgeteer <laughs> in this game. Um, some people love it. And I just find myself, um, you know, it's it's a lot of investment. Um, and when he finally starts to get good, it's almost like you don't need him anymore. Um, but like I said, the Bard is really good. And then the other interesting one that can do lockpick is the Ninja. Now, um, the problem with the Ninja, and here, I'm just going to... Uh, by the way, the Hobbit is usually the best ninja. Um, so, we'll just put some points into stuff here. So if you look at the ninja skills, it doesn't seem like a lot, but the ninja eventually learns alchemy as well, so you'll have an overload of skills. <laughs> the ninja does everything, and its basic advantage is critical strike. And it also has Throne Criticals, which no other class has. And it also has Auto Penetrate, which means, um, you know, when you're using a sling, or I'm sorry, uh, I don't think it works with a sling. It only works with um, truly thrown weapons, like, like, a, like a star, like a, you know, throwing star or a throwing dart um, or the throwing knives. Um, it Auto Penetrates, which basically means it ignores, like, armor. And it'll, it'll really do some good damage. Uh, basically, it's got a higher chance of really hitting and doing its thing. Um, the Critical Strike bonus. Critical Strike in this game, if you'll notice that with the basic party, none of them had Critical Strike. Um, the Rogue has this uh, backstab ability that um, it's a little bit of RNG, but basically based on their skill and their level and then the level of the enemy, they have a chance to do 1, 2x, 3x, or 4x damage against the enemy. 
the 4x being really rare, but a 2 or a 3 is not so bad. The only thing with the rogue is that the daggers are daggers. They're not very high damage, damaging weapons. So being able to do a 2x or 3x with a dagger, um, it still doesn't compare to like a fighter. Um, but you could equip the rogue with a sword, for example. Um, so there's options. <clears throat> Here, the critical strike. Um, basically, there is a percentage chance that no matter how many hit points the enemy has, you insta-kill it. And I'm, I'm not kidding. It's an insta-kill. So um, the ninja has a 25% bonus to this skill. It's the only class in the game that can get up to 125 instead of just 100 in the critical strike. So <clears throat> arguably, you would think, wow, that makes the ninja pretty darn good. It does. Um... The ninja, um, <clears throat> outside of that, is basically like a jack-of-all-trades master of none. Um, the, for example, the samurai has a sword bonus. The Valkyrie has a polearm bonus. Um, the uh, martial arts for the monk. You know, locks and traps, the thief does it better. So if he's spending points on mock and trap... Um, he also needs stealth, because uh, without stealth, the, the ninja can only wear very select armor. So he's not going to be as good as the fighter in terms of, like, armor. So you're relying on stealth, which basically, the way stealth works is um, it's a bonus to your AC. So you get the stealth all the way up to 100, it's going to maximize, give you, like, as much AC as possible. <clears throat> the higher... Like, there's certain thresholds that once you get over it, then your AC bonus goes up. I don't know exactly what the thresholds are. I'm sure some nerd on the internet has... <coughs> excuse me, the list. Um, and then, like I said, pickpocket is sort of... It's something that I'm not so sure is all that great anymore. Um, but the problem with a ninja is you want it to be a fighter. Um, since he's good at throwing... You don't necessarily need him up in the front line. So you could make him a uh, throwing expert that picks traps. And you don't necessarily need to give him stealth unless he's on the front line. And then give him critical strike. And somewhere along the way, he's going to also want some range combat, right? Because that helps with the... Um, uh, applies the range criticals with bows. Ah, actually, it doesn't... Oh, here you go. Sling, thrown weapons. Yep, all those things. <clears throat> so, um, that's the problem with the ninja. The ninja um, has too many things going on, and he's not the expert at everything. So now, I made a mention that I created a five ninja party with a bishop. Because the bishop is the other elite one. And <clears throat> We'll go ahead and... So the bishop is a caster. And I'm just going to go ahead and select one spell. The bishop has all four books. So the mage is wizardry. The priest is divinity. The alchemist is alchemy. The psionic is the psionics. And then these are the realms, right? If you'll notice that the, um, the bishop has six points in all four books. He can learn every spell in the game. <clears throat> now here's the difference. So let's say I put five points into that one. Um, <clears throat> the wizardry um, is 11. Whereas for the mage, I think it was 18. So the rate that he's going to learn spells is going to be a little bit lower. The mage will learn spells quicker than the bishop. <clears throat> the bishop also requires more experience points to level up. So that's going to slow him down as well. And when he casts his spells, his spells won't be as damaging. So there's a lot of drawbacks to the bishop. <clears throat> and there's a lot of debates about it. But the cool thing about the bishop is he can cast every spell in the game. If you develop him. And the bishop requires what people would refer to as training. Meaning you're going to cast spells just to get your skill to level up. Even if it's silly. Like you're going to cast it even if you don't need it. Um... So to train your bishop, um, 
it requires a lot of babysitting. And <clears throat> his spells will never do as much damage as a as a mage or a, or an alchemist or whatever. But here's the deal. <clears throat> There's a whole bunch of spells that just benefit the party. And you don't need penetrate, spell penetration, to cast it on your own party, your own allies. So the only time <clears throat> spell penetration matters is if I'm shooting a fireball at the enemy. But if I'm using my bishop as a, a basically as a glorified priest, then you know, he's going to be doing the healing, he's going to be doing the party buffing, all that stuff. The bishop is an awesome, awesome character. And, in fact, I think it's better than the priest in almost every way, um, from that angle. Uh, the other thing is, like, the level 7 priest spells are really good. The bishop can learn them just as much as anybody. Um, but very few of them are attacking spells. So, the only thing you lose is that the priest can learn the spells a little bit earlier and also the priest can has that special prayer ability and you lose that the priest is also arguably better at um if you want to put him on the front line with mason flail and shield and stuff like that um the other thing is is that the um artifacts is the primary skill so you'll be able to identify items a little bit better with uh this particular class um yeah now, but just like the uh, ninja, uh, it's it's a problem because you have all these realms and books you want to put your points into, and you can only put so many. <clears throat> so one of the tricks that people do is rather than specializing in all four books, um, just specialize in two. So like wizardry and divinity, and then um, maybe make a second one that does alchemy and psionics, and now you got all four books covered, but it's over two bishops instead of one totally viable um there's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong at all and then you could focus your points on just the two and now you're not spreading your points so thin <clears throat> so when i said that i wanted to that i built a five ninja one bishop party that's exactly what i did except on the ninja side i also focused my points on certain things and then made sure i didn't spread it out so going back to the ninja Oh, here you are. So, for example, one of them had to pick traps. And then whoever was doing the lock picking is also the one doing the throwing. So they're going to basically not be on the front line. <clears throat> and then this is the same character that's going to do the alchemy. So it's going to because alchemy, they get it level four. So they were going to be my magic caster, lock picker, thrower dude. So I'm basically treating the ninja like it's another mage. Um, and it's, of course, it's an alchemist, which is a type of magic caster. It's an alchemist that can pick traps and uh, get critical throws. And then, of course, uh, critical strike, um, you would boost that along with the range combat as well. So I said I was going to put five points here, five points there. And then, you know, divide the rest amongst those. <clears throat> or I would just do five points here, and then, you know, two, two, and two, or whatever I ultimately end up deciding to do, right? Um, <clears throat> it's a great way to have one of your ninjas, right? Then I had another ninja that specialized in a sword, and then another ninja that specialized in a polearm. Another ninja that specialized in the staff and wand. And then another ninja that specialized in martial arts. And so you can eventually get ninjas that are good at each individual thing. <clears throat> so the one that specialized in the sword also took care of mythology. The one that did the polearm took care of the communication. The one that did the martial arts, you know, maybe did the artifacts. So I covered all those skills. And I basically made sure that I had at least three frontline ninjas. I think I made sure there was four. And then there's two that sit back. You know, one of the ninjas is going to do a weapon. And another one is, you know. <clears throat> so the point is, um, if you have your ninjas focus very strictly, and each of them, you know, knocks off these, these soft skills that you just need for the game, 
um, you could have yourself a nice party of ninjas. So I know I have them in here. Yeah, it's called nin Ninja Power. So I'm here in the lower monastery. Um, just getting ready to go into the this particular room. And let me just show you how my how my party looks. So I got a human bishop, like I said. And you can see I'm doing wizardry and divinity with that bishop. And I got fire, water, and divine magic. And then these are the spells that I'm using. <clears throat> so bishops rocking and rolling, level five. Then I got level five ninjas. So here's the first one. Um, you can see he's a, using a... We're going to go over here. I have a mason flail. He's doing stealth and critical strike. And he could afford to put a little bit more points in his close combat. Then I have another ninja that's using the sword. Also stealth and critical strike. Then this one is martial arts, stealth, critical strike. And then we got this one that's doing locks and traps. I actually chose to go after pickpocket and throwing and sling. And if I could do it differently, I'd get rid of the pickpocket. I'd dump that. But look at that. Also mythology and range. So this one sits back and does ranged attacks. Then my last one, you can see, is the communication and the artifacts, so all the soft skills, and is using a staff and wand and alchemy. So a little different than what I just told you, but what I told you I think is actually more efficient. <laughs> I would make this one into the alchemist, possibly. Um, but you know what? Um, I only need three on the front line, like I said. So I have two on the back line. One's going to do the casting, and one's going to do the throwing. So, um, and the throwing is, is its primary method of attack. And yeah, and then I got a caster here as well. So this one's going to, you know, pull the load with casting, and this one's going to help with alchemy. And you can see he has four spells already known as well. So... That's, um, I'm not very far in the game, if some of you are familiar with this game. This is still very early, but I am rocking it so far. And, you know, there's obviously mid-game and end-game I need to hold up against, and um, I don't know how well these ninjas will do in that regard, but as far as the monastery is concerned, um, which is a really great test, because the monastery is not an easy place to beat. Um, <coughs> the uh, five ninja... Uh, oh, I'm sorry ready for you. I did four ninjas, didn't I? This is a bishop. Oh my gosh. I apologize. I did four ninjas and two bishops. My mistake. So this one's alchemy and psionics. So I did that thing I was telling you about where I divided the bishops up into two books each. So this one is alchemy and psionics and taking care of artifacts and communication. And then this bishop is... Well, it looks like maybe just communication. And then this bishop is the artifact wizardry divinity. My apologies. Not five, but only four. So, yeah, this is the one that will start doing alchemy. Or, I don't necessarily need any of the ninjas to do alchemy because I have alchemy with this character. So, my apologies there. All right. Um, so, getting back to... I don't think there's a way to quit to the main menu. Jerk. All right. Sorry for the black screen. The The game capture feature of my recording software will not capture Wizardry 8. So I have to sh basically, um, I'm doing a screen capture. So that's why you're seeing my screen instead of the game. And then, yeah, it goes black for a while, but then here we go. All right. So what is what I consider to be the best party? 
Well, I love some characters that people don't love in this game. And I basically love them for different reasons, uh, but I'll explain as I go. But the first one I love is the Samurai. Um, so we're talking about these are the advanced classes now. And so the Samurai uh, will learn at level 4. When you're talking about advanced classes, every advanced class learns some kind of magic at level 4. That's what makes them the advanced class. The Samurai is going to use very specific armor and also can use very specific weapons that nobody else in the game can use and it casts mage spells. <clears throat> so I think the thing that gyrates people is that the wizard spells or the mage spells don't mix or gel well with the samurai. I don't disagree. And my attitude is, is who cares? You're not doing a samurai for the mage spells. Um, some people uh, can... What they do is they use only advanced classes and their magic in the game is only the advanced classes. So you have to get to level 4 before you even start getting magic in this game. And they make all advanced, you know, so like they'll make the Lord, the, you know, the Valkyrie. Um, well, since I'm sharing my screen, they make these. One, two, three, four. There's five of them right there right? You can make five of these and then maybe a bishop for magic. But see, people don't even do that. They just do five of these because this one, the samurai here, let me let me break this out some more. The samurai does mage spells. The monk, psionic. The uh, ranger is alchemy. And then these two are divine. So it is not uncommon to see people take four of these, you know, the Lord of the or the Valkyrie. One of they don't always take both. Like they'll just take four of these, and then they got all four spell books covered. Um, and then what do they do with the other two characters? Well, sometimes they just play a four-player game, right? Because remember, you don't have to always fill every slot. But you know, what do they do with the other two slots? Well, you know, they could put in um, like a rogue and a fighter. For example, and so now they got a lot of frontline, you know, attacks as well. Uh, th this the world's your oyster, really. Um, or they could throw in the ninja, two ninjas, right, to take the to round off the bottom two. Um, there's a lot of um, choices. So um, I'm not saying that it's the most popular option, because I think um, uh, the bard. I'm gonna the bard for sure is a uh, to some people is a must-have. Um, the Gadgeteer uh, is also a very popular one. And then everything else is up for flux, to be quite honest. Um, these are the two that I think people make arguments for more often than they make arguments against. Um, but everything else, world's your oyster. And, and like I said, uh, the biggest thing is you want to balance the experience points. So if you're going to start having expert characters in your party you don't want a lot of basic characters in your party um, and if you're gonna do advanced characters in your party you want to avoid the basics uh, not always but but like it doesn't hurt to have a fighter in your party if the other five are expert like bishops and ninjas it doesn't hurt because even if this guy levels up faster than everybody else the whole party level is gonna stay down because remember the um the um the spawns are based on the average level of the party, not the level of one character. So if this one character is level 10 and everybody else is level 5, then you're just going to you're going to get a a spawn of maybe level 6 um tops cuz that level 10 character is not going to bring everything up too much. So anyways, get it back to the game. Um I love samurais. Okay? Um This is a extremely controversial one because if there were two classes in the game that people don't like, it's the Samurai and the Lord. And I love both of them. <laughs> so um, I do Samurais and Lords, and I think they're both fantastic. Um, and I'll explain why. Uh, let's get into this. So uh, I don't care about the magic 
casting ability of the samurai, it's the critical strike. The samurai is about critical strike. The the fighter does probably twice as much damage as a samurai. I don't care. The samurai insta kills. So while the fighter's sitting there beating down something that has a thousand, two thousand hit points, the samurai just kills it in one hit. Um, now maybe it takes four or five, but you get what I mean. Um, the um, <clears throat> the biggest thing about the samurai is you got to think criticals. Criticals are what matters. And um, oh, sorry, my son is okay. You got to be thinking criticals. Now the other thing that I do when I play this game is I never ever do a fighter lizardman even though that 50 points is juicy I think the Dracon is 60 points look at that that is so juicy I mean to come in here and go BAM you're at 75 70 whoops and 80 oh my gosh that is amazing but um I ignore both of them. Here's why. Intelligence. If you're going to play a non-basic character... Uh, well, see, with the fighter, you don't have to ignore these. Because since they're basic, the fighter... You're going to be putting points in the fighter every time you level up. Um, <clears throat> when you go into your point distribution with ninjas and these advanced characters, you have... You never have enough points. Like, I want to put points into eight different skills, and I only have enough points for three of them. You see what I mean? So, since I only have enough points for three, then I have to rely on my character to, to level up their skills on their own. So every time they swing a sword, I want that sword skill to go up automatically. Well, what causes that to happen? Intelligence and senses. Senses causes combat skills such as close combat critical strike and dual weapons to go up okay intelligence it's for music artifact engineering communication close and ranged combat mythology and all forms and schools of magic so um uh it doesn't flat out say it but if you it's the consensus across all the forums is that intelligence plays a key role in the ability of your skills to auto level up. So if I do a Dracon character, I have all the wonderful stuff that I'm looking for here, but the intelligence is 35 and the senses is 30. He's basically dumb as a rock. And so the, the skills are not going to level up on their own. And, um, you know, I, it's not a scientific thing. This is very anecdotal. But I think if I made a... elf fighter who has zero bonus points but 50 intelligence and 40 senses let's pick a different one let's do hobbit which is even better right so hobbit i got bonus points here i got 40 intelligence and 50 senses so basically if you set them side by side swing in their sword the Hobbit or the Elf is going to gain double, maybe even more, points than the other one. And it's just anecdotal. I don't have the exact numbers to tell you. Uh, the only other thing I can tell you is that intelligence is important, but as long as it's near 50... Because um, like one thing you could consider doing is why not do that? So so the intelligence is, uh, you know, a lot higher. It's a good idea. It's not the worst thing I've seen. But if I'm going to jack up one of these, I'm going to jack up senses. Because senses will help the other skills more. Um, so it's a hard call. And I've seen people debate on the internet about this. Intelligence does drive all the skills up. Um, senses drives them up as well, but not as good as intelligence. It's just that senses helps with these skills 
um, the, and intelligence does not. So critical strike, remember that's the thing we're looking for? Critical strike is a key skill that if you're on making a character that depends on 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 killing things instantly, you want your critical strike to be raising. So getting back to the samurai, making a lizardman samurai, not a good idea. Because his senses is 30 and his intelligence is 55. Why? Because the samurai requires <coughs> 55 intelligence. So a lot of the bonus points are gone trying to raise that lizardman up. But the senses are still really low. And the same with the Dracon. Um, intelligence, of course, got Rose risen up, but the senses is low. Now, one that people like to use is the Felper. And to be quite honest, this is a really good idea. Um, the dexterity is minimum, but the speed is already five higher. And more speed means more hits. And then, of course, the senses uh, doesn't change, but it starts with 50. And then the intelligence, of course, gets jacked up to 55. Um, Felper has an intelligence of 40 and 50. So Felper is a great idea. The only thing I don't like is this. They get frozen really easy. And so you're going to... You know, you're going to have to have a magic user that, that, you know, basically gets rid of that condition. And they could possibly lose their turn a lot. Um, and, and trust me, you'll play half the game before you run into the characters that start freezing you. But the moment you start running into those characters, you're going to hate it. And um, that's why the Felper scares me away. It's like the perfect character, though, for a samurai or a ninja. So what do we have with that in mind? So first of all... The humans are 45 across the board. And to be quite honest, the humans are pretty darn good. And you'll see me choose humans a lot for that reason. Since they're 45 across the board, um, the humans, they only get a paltry 20 bonus points, uh, which is 7 each. But it's pretty darn nice because everything is at least respectable. But I don't need piety. Now, remember, I told you I don't want to be a spellcaster with the samurai. If you're a spellcaster, piety helps you get more spell points, but um, most non-divinity casters don't necessarily need piety. Um, piety is mostly a dump stat, uh, but uh, in this case with a caster, you don't want it to be a dump stat, but with the case of a samurai, I don't need 45 piety. So let's go to the elf. Here you can see 50 intelligence, 40 senses, fantastic. The problem with the elf is the 35 strength and the 35 vitality. The samurai needs to be up in the front line. And here you can see I'm only getting 10 bonus points, but it does work. Um, it's not bad. I'm only getting four extra points. So it's not the best, but it works. The dwarf has damage resistance, which you would think is fantastic. But look at this. It's minus five. So what that means is that, like, the intelligence of the dwarf is super low. And so um, uh, the issue with the dwarf is that there's not enough points to even meet the minimum requirements. So the very first time he levels up, it's going to use up five points. And so what this is considered, he's an apprentice samurai. So after he levels up one time, he's not going to get to improve any of these points because he's in a deficit of five. And uh, you do get... Um, uh, you do get uh, six points, so he'll have one point to spend after he levels up. So Dwarf is not a good idea. The Gnome, uh, fantastic, fantastic, but the strength and speed are super low. So um, there's characters that have excellent um, stats, but also have weaknesses. And with the Samurai, you can't have weaknesses. And I think the biggest argument against the Samurai, why people don't like it, is that requirement for 55 intelligence is ridiculously high for a fighter type of character. Because most fighter classes, or fighter races, um, don't have high intelligence. So um, the Gnome, uh, respectable 15, because uh, you know it, it averages out pretty nicely, and you got a respectable 15 points. Not the worst idea. But look at the Hobbit. 25 bonus points 
and the Hobbit has everything except for piety, which is the one dump stat that we don't care about. So the Hobbit didn't have to spend points to raise up the piety, had to spend 15 points on the intelligence, 10 on the strength, but um, and then look at that, the resistances are good. Hobbit is where you want to be for the samurai. But let's go real quick through. The fairy is super awful in certain things, um, but really high in speed and dexterity. We're not doing fairies. Um, and then, of course, we went through the lizardmen already. Uh, lizardmen at least has a plus 10. Dracon has a 20. Um, yeah, the senses is super low. And then, like I said, the felper was good. The raywolf is also an apprentice. Um, they're super high in piety, which is the one thing we don't need. So, um, and then the mook has 15. Um, low piety, which we don't care about, but dexterity and speed are both low. So, um, his senses is 55, which is excellent. So, this is arguably also a decent character. Um, not as good as the hobbit in terms of bonus points, but you got a respectable 50... 55 across the board everywhere that it matters and the intelligence is decent vitality is decent so it's between the mook and the hobbit for me the hobbit um if we go back has so the mook has 55 senses and 15 points the piety is a lot lower the hobbit piety is a little higher that's a little lower but it has 25 points so my attitude with the samurai is that the hobbit's just clearly the winner. And maybe you guys realized this 10 minutes ago and I, I'm wasting too much time. I'm 37 minutes in, I haven't made my first character. So um, what do I want to do with the samurai? Well, we want critical strike. So here's the next thing with critical strike is we need to look at the critical strike skill and see what its derivatives are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a guess and do senses. And I'm going to do um, dexterity, which is your ability to hit. And then I'm going to do speed, because I want a lot of extra attacks. Now, the senses I'm doing because of the critical strike. And I come over here and I'm going to look at critical strike. It's based off of senses and speed. Those are the two things you want to level up because you want critical strike to happen. And then with the sword, it's based off of strength and dexterity. And of course, he specializes in sword use. So I want to put five points in sword for sure. And then I'm going to do, um, now this is tricky. I have three things I want to level up here. But I'm going to do, um, critical strike is going to level up on its own in a lot of ways. But I'm going to spend at least one point here. We need dual weapons. And we also need close combat. See, affects a successful attack. Senses. Intelligence. Samurai already has high intelligence because of the base requirement of the class. So the close combat is going to level up pretty well and the senses is going to help it and so dual weapon requires senses and dexterity so you see how senses is playing into all these skills having a high senses is going to make these skills go up the only one that's not going to go up is the sword because that's strength and dexterity so we're going to pump the maximum points in the sword every time and then critical strike is going to go up on its own because we're putting points in both senses and speed so, um, so there you go. So now we got ourselves a samurai. Uh, it is a, uh, a hobbit, which these don't look like great looking samurais. Um, I think the coolest looking samurai type of character is that one. I don't know why, but I just love the, the fan, but it's a hobbit. It's not a, it's not a lizard bin. So Thematically, you could say, ah, this doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, we could try to use... There's not a lot of choices. That's where I'm trying to go with this. I mean, from a human perspective, I use this character. 
All right. So since I'm such a fan of these, I will call this one YouTube Jeff and otherwise Jeff. And um, so some of these voices are awesome. Um, what do you want? If it walks, I can change that. Then we got ordinary men fear the power of darkness. I revel in it. <laughs> uh, Don't worry about a thing, friend. I'll take care of it for you. By my honor, I swear I'll protect you from danger. It's like the paladin type. The Is it something you need? I do it. Just don't put it in a writing. This is more your uh, ninja. Who can make the muddy water clear? Let the water be still and it will become clear on its own. Well, hello there. I think I hear the open road calling our names. <laughs> Say, isn't that a song? So it's like your bard. I believe there is something unseen in all things seen. It is that which I attempt to reveal. You see? That I see as I picked up the hammer and saw. He was happy to join. He thought it would make an exciting chapter in his book. That's my favorite one. <laughs> that guy is awesome. That this is another one. Sure. I'm itching to do something wild and reckless anyway. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> All right, but don't expect me to waste my time yakking. And then the burly one, I you so. You want me fight? I fight. I fight. <laughs> Tis wit, not strength, that make a solid lad. But I be lucky to have both. So I guess that's supposed to be Scottish. So we could have a Scottish samurai. Uh, then we got the intelligence one. I would be honored to assist your brave band in its explorations. That is, I'd like to come along. And then I didn't do the aggressive one, but uh There are two kinds of people. Hunters and their prey. Let me assure you, I am one of the hunters. It always reminds me of um uh gosh, what's that? The hateful eight. There's that that actor who plays as the uh, the German he plays as like a dentist in that game but he's like a German bounty hunter or whatever it always reminds me of him I'm awful with names I don't remember all right so who do I want to be uh, I don't know I don't know so let me um sure let's <laughs> We're gonna do this he one. Was happy to join. He thought it would make an exciting chapter in his book. <laughs> We're gonna do Puss in Boots Samurai. Um, all right, and then I'm gonna add him to the party. All right, so I know I'm what 43 minutes in. Okay, next one. I want to continue the theme of Critical Strike. So the next one we're gonna do is a monk. Now. You could argue, this is a very strong argument, that people don't make monks because there is a monk in the game that's pretty awesome. And uh, it's an NPC. Uh, it's a robot monk, which um, it's really good at doing the, the fist attacks, but the robot monk cannot cast spells. Uh, I can't argue with that, to be honest with you. The robot monk, um, its name's RFS81, he's pretty darn good. Um, but my attitude is, is why not have two monks? <laughs> why do you have to limit yourself to just one? Um, but anyways, um, I like taking the monk for the reason of uh, he's going to be the only one who's going to be able to do psionic spells so he can have access to them and and then also because of the critical strike. So the requirements for the monk, you could see also high intelligence, high senses, <clears throat> which what did I just tell you I value so much? It's intelligence and senses. So again, I, I like this character for that reason. 
And if you go through the usual suspects, the human is going to turn out to be one of the best ones because the monks does demand a lot of points in a lot of places. And some of them, like the elf, um, isn't going to be bad. In fact, the elf has more bonus points, but the strength being low and the vitality low is just going to be critically awful. Um, so the dwarf, again, bad idea. The gnome, decent idea, except for the strength. The hobbit, not a bad idea at all. Um, I think the human is just better. Uh, the dexterity is a little better. Nope. So, Hobbit has five more dexterity, but lower strength. The human has more. But then the human, so Hobbit only has 20 bonus points. The human has 25. The fairy, again, is a crap show. Don't worry about that. The lizardman, <laughs> minus 30. <laughs> Uh, you would... <laughs> I See, this you could do for fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, okay. The Dracon, minus 15. The Felper, again, really great option. The low vitality hurts. Uh, Ray Wolf, uh, just doesn't have a lot of bonus. Otherwise would be okay. And then the Mook is not bad. Except uh, you have a zero bonus. So if I compare that to the human, I'm only losing 10 points here and here, but I have 25 points to give. Okay, so I'm going to choose a female monk because uh, monks do a lot of punching and kicking. And with high speed, they're going to kick and punch a lot of times. Sometimes four, uh, maybe even more times per combat round. And so that causes their stamina to dwindle. They're just like a bard in that regard. And so when the stamina starts dwindling, you need to, you know, be able to replace it. So having a female monk um, is the key because there's items in the game that will help you with your uh, stamina regeneration. And it only works for females. So you're going to want to um, use that. All right. So same deal as before. We want critical strike. So senses needs to go up. Uh, we want speed, because we want it to to be able to go fast. We want to punch a lot of times. Um, we definitely want vitality and strength to go up, because that makes the stamina go up. Um, but um, you want your punches to hit. So that's where dexterity comes in, and it also improves stealth. Basically, you want to improve more things than you have points to do. <laughs> um so which of the three is best? That's a toss-up, to be quite honest. The uh, the strength um, will do extra damage and also increase your stamina. The vitality, of course, gives you extra hit points uh, and extra stamina. Let's see how much more. So we gained one whole hit point, and the stamina, though, did go up. Uh, uh, it went up by five points. You might mock that, but every time he levels up, he's getting more hit points, more stamina. Um, the vitality is not retroactive. So if I wait until level 20 to finally improve his vitality, he doesn't gain all the hit points he would have gained um, earlier in the game. So vitality is one of those weird ones where um, you want it up high in the early game um, because that's when they get all the bonuses every time they level up. But in this case... <sighs> I'm tempted to just say I want dexterity to go up because you don't want his punches to miss. You want him to be able to hit his punches. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, but let's go check out his skills. Martial arts requires dexterity and speed, so that's why there you go. The close combat senses and intelligence, and then the critical strike senses and speed. You see where I'm going with all that? And then uh, he does have access to these other skills. Um, you don't need dual weapons when he's using fists. So that's one thing you don't have to worry about. But the stealth requires dexterity and intelligence. Hence the improvement of dexterity. So I'm going to do martial arts. And then I'm going to do critical strike. And... I need close combat and stealth. 
I might even need him to help out with mythology. I don't know. The bard will take care of communication. The bishop will take care of the artifacts. Hmm. It's just that these are all zeros, so he's not going to be very good. Nope, we want him to be a, a combat machine, so I'm going to go ahead and put two points into stealth and three into close combat. Yeah. These will go up on their own, and when you're picking high intelligence characters, like I said, these are start to go up on their own. So um, that's the whole point of picking these high intelligence characters. The... Um, and with the monk, there's monk characters. We have like that one, and we also have that one. <sighs> All right, I'm not good at um, coming up with names. Um, who do you want this person to be? I would say Chun, but Chun's a man. <laughs> um, the the. Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins is the movie I'm quoting on this one. Um, I don't know of any female... Let's see. Female martial artists. Ugh, I'm drawing a blank. I don't even know a lot of male martial artists, to be honest, but... Um, so then let's switch gears. It's a monk. Likes to... So we're going to call her One Punch. Alright, so... Release your hold on this world. All things change or perish. This is a great enlightenment. That's the monk voice, apparently. Just relax. It's going to be alright. So they, um... The, the female voices are completely different. Let's get moving, then. We don't have much time. You got it. I'm ready for anything, and I mean anything. It makes it sound like she's propositioning me for something that's not legal. All right. There will be many implements of destruction at my disposal, yeah? <laughs> that's the worst Russian accent ever. You looking at me? An adventure? Why, I'd be delighted to help you. It sounds most entertaining. <laughs> I like that one. Sure, darling. Just leave it in my hands. I have loads of experience. Believe me. <laughs> I like that one, too, for all kinds of devious reasons. All right. One may feel fear in the face of danger, so long as one banishes fear when danger actually arrives. So say the wise. Oh, yeah, we did the wise one before. Well, well. I wondered when you would get around to me. You won't be disappointed. No one slips anything past me. You sign me up, and I'll get you through anything. Trust me. If you're looking for someone to protect your interests, I'm the one. I have excellent credentials. Well, that was better Russian than the other one. All right, this one. No, not this one. The next one is my Very favorite well. one. Our enemies shall feel my wrath. I've never used this one before. I should probably try it sometime. But this one just, oh my gosh, she cracks me up. All right, then. I join you as soon as I finish milking the cows and gelding the bulls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how could you not choose that one? I'd love to join you. It sounds absolutely fabulous. <laughs> I've consulted the stars, and they forecast great things for our adventure. I've never used that one either. All right then, but look here. I know what's what, so don't try to pull anything. All right, decent enough. Some believe I can speak with animals, but it is they who communicate with me. That's just a nut job. All right, I know I had found one that I was okay with. Uh, I don't want to do the wise stuff. An adventure? Why, 
I'd be delighted to help you. It sounds most entertaining. Yeah, we're going to do that one. I know it's not thematic, but it's still... All right, add to party. Next character, the most controversial, is the Lord. Okay, so the Lord has no intelligence requirements. So that's the one tricky part about this one. And no senses requirement. So um, the Lord has health regeneration, which everybody on the forums would tell you is not all that important. And it's not. Um, the health regeneration is not quicker than the rate at which you're dying. The dual weapons, um, again, is also something that people poo-poo because dual weapons, of course, is your ability to use two weapons at once, which is great. The 25% bonus helps you in the early game. Um, but at the late game, if you get your skill up to 100, the 25% bonus is useless because 125 in dual weapons is just the same as 100 in dual weapons. So, because um, what dual weapons does is it's removing penalties. So once you get to 100, all the penalties are removed. So going up to 125 doesn't give you any bonuses. It, those same penalties are already removed. So people will tell you that this primary skill is worthless. Um, the 25% bonus is better spent somewhere else. That is true. Um, the health regeneration, true. So why do I like this character? Um, the biggest thing is, is that the health regeneration allows you to wear cursed items that cause you to lose health. Um, because the health regeneration cancels it out. So, for example, you can put on like a, a cursed armor and it causes you to lose one health every so many turns. Well, you're eventually going to die wearing the thing. Um, the Lord can wear it and it doesn't have any effect on him at all. Um, <clears throat> the other thing about the Lord is that it does cast divinity spells, which is good. Um, but the funny thing is, is the Valkyrie does too. And so most people choose the Valkyrie instead. But there's an NPC Valkyrie you can pick up early in the game who basically can stay with you the almost the entire game. There's a few spots she won't go to. And, um, you know, I just think the Lord does so much better. Um, so the, the only thing is, is that its antithesis is it doesn't value the skills that I value. But values everything else. So, um, one thing with the Lord is you could choose the Ray Wolf. You'll get a 20% 20 point bonus. The intelligence is low. So the skills won't rise as quickly as you'd like. Um, but everything else is spot on. Um, another one is the Dwarf. Um, you get a 25 point bonus with the Dwarf. I think actually, uh... So the dwarf, I think, is superior. Ah, no, the dwarf has 35 senses. So senses is super poor. Intelligence is also poor. But you get this damage resistance. Some people like to do that. The 60 vitality, of course, allows you to... You'll stay alive a lot longer. Um, the human is probably the best. you got a 20 going on. Um, you're going to have a decent intelligence and senses because the human has one of the best. Uh, the mook. Uh, <laughs> the problem is, is that uh, it's forcing all the weaknesses of the mook to go up, and so um, the senses, of course, is really good, and the intelligence is really good because he starts naturally with those, um, right? It's just these 35s and 25s are being brought up, and so everything's being brought up, and he's at a minus 10, and um, so as you level up, those points are going to go in and um, fill in the spots that he's missing. So uh, <laughs> it's it's an interesting idea. I don't know if I would recommend it. The Felper, of course, uh, not bad at all, because the one weakness of the Felper um, is counted for here. But you have zero bonus points, and you still have this, this thing here that I don't like. Um, so I talk about the Hobbit a lot. The Hobbit's decent, not the best. Um, let's just go backwards here. Draken is actually decent, except the intelligence and senses are low. Um, Wizardman, same deal. Fairy is horrible. This is another reason people hate the Lord. There's not a lot of, uh, bonuses. So I'm going to choose a human. And, um, 
I believe with the Lord, I am going to do strength and dexterity. And then for my third magic trick, we're going to do senses just to get that up some more. The thing with senses is some of these, the dual weapons and close combat, it'll help with. All right. So, oh, I got to get the uh, Lord can only be male. Oh, actually, no, you could do a female Lord. I didn't realize. Let's just do male. There's a reason I remember you should always pick a male for Lord. I just can't remember why. Um, okay. So the Lord, of course, specializes in dual weapons, dexterity, and senses, which we put points into. Um, they start off with skills and sword and dagger, but you really want to do mace and flail, which is strength and dexterity. So I'm going to do five points in that. I'm going to do five points in dual weapon and five in close combat. Now the Lord only needs those three things. So um, he could start helping with other stuff. He will eventually get divinity spells and he will start putting points in those eventually. All right, I think I already used this picture. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to, let's do that picture and um, Ulrich von Lichtenstein. You know, because he's the Lord that really wasn't the Lord. Um, I already took that one. Sure. I'm itching to do something wild and reckless anyway. <laughs> we gotta do it. We gotta do it. All right, let's do that one. <laughs> All right, so we got the Lord, we got the monk. Actually, uh, just because of my other playthrough I'm doing when I'm not recording, uh, we're going to add the Lord next because I'm used to them being in certain positions. Um, in fact, I think I made the Lord first. Now, this order doesn't matter. I'm just used to him being the Lord, him being this, the samurai, and then the monk, um, etc. All right. Um... Okay, there's three of our characters. So, uh, the fourth one is the ranger. Um, I like the auto search. I cannot live without it, to be quite honest. Um, people will make a mook ranger. Um, it's not bad. The speed is the only thing I don't like. Um, you do get 40 bonus points, so that's good. The ranger requires the intelligence and the senses, which... I keep valuing, right? So, as you notice, I'm, I'm picking all the characters except for the Lord. And the Lord's interchangeable, if you ask me. Um, I sort of picked the Lord for this playthrough because people hate the Lord. And so I want to show how it can be done. Uh, but there's other characters that would work just as well. Um, and then also, uh, I'm showing how all the advanced classes, you know, the Lord has divinity. The, the monk has psionics. The, even though we're not going to care about it much, the samurai does the wizardry, and then the ranger is going to do alchemy. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get this in as our fourth character. And so the speed is the bad one on here. So I get to put out 14 points per attribute, so I could get the speed up to 49 and then just let the rest rock. That's not a bad option. Uh, let's try... What does a few other ones look like? So if we go to the human, I get 25 points. Ooh, that's actually a tough call. So let's say I compensate for the speed by doing that, and I do dexterity and senses, which is what you need to do for an archer. So we're looking at 69, 47... 69 with really good everything else.
And if I make a human, I'm already at 45. I'm not at 69. See, I'm lower on both of those. But this is already at 45, and I got seven points I can spend elsewhere. So I can make intelligence go up, or that one would be ahead. Um, the human's not bad. I know it's lower on the two primaries, but then we go to the elf. Uh, we got ten points. Hmm. The dwarf, no good. Gnome, same problem as the mook. I'd rather take the mook. Although, 30 bonus points. What was the mook? 40. Okay. Interesting. Hobbit. The piety being low is fine. 30 bonus points right there. Why would I not make a hobbit ranger? I mean, I guess that's not 69. But I'm already at 50 for the speed. That's pretty good. The fairy we're not going to do, although... Wow. Lizardmen, bad. Dracon, not as good. The Felper, again, very attractive, but don't like that. Raywolf, no good. And we're back to the Mook again. Yeah, let's do a Mook. Um, the speed is the thing that, that bothers me. But we can do 14 points. And these two skills, which means he'll hit 100 quicker. And then the speed, we only got up to 47. Um, the speed is important because the archer currently shoots one time every combat round. You get that speed up high enough, he'll start shooting two or three times every combat round. It makes a difference. And the uh, ranger has... Um, I know we haven't talked about this yet. It's not in here, but the ranger has built-in critical strike. Um, I think it's here. Range criticals. See, that's... So So it's just like the critical strike of the other characters, except you can't level it up. There's a. It's a small chance. It's not a very large chance, and I think it does improve with your level. But um, there's a chance that every arrow will insta-kill the enemy. And so you want the speed to be up because um, you can insta-kill your enemy um, with a higher speed because uh, you're shooting more times. Just It's just a law of averages. Um, and then... Uh, so that, that would be the argument for why you would want to choose a human instead. Um, so here you can see it's 62, 64. I don't know why. What the heck is going on? There we go. So that's 64 and 52. Sixty-nine. So that's ten more points. And five points lower on the speed. The ten more points between these two is huge. Because you only get three points every level up. So he's already higher than the human would be after a level and a half. In dexterity and senses. So that means he'll get to his hundred quicker than the human by a level and a half and then he'll be able to put three points into this this is five points behind so this is a level and a half behind the speed so in one level one and a half levels the speed will be cut right back up um, and the difference of five speed does not make a lick of difference in the archery uh, for now it's you got to get the speed up to like 70 or 80 before you start seeing the extra shots um, let's do a MOOC just for a variety. Um, okay. 
coming across scouting senses intelligence no surprise um range combat senses intelligence no surprise um bow dexterity strength so that's the one weakness we have so we want the scouting up uh, I'm going to put two points in bow, two points in range combat. Um, we are going to give him like an axe or something in case he's ever up close. But um, for now, mythology. See, look at that. Eight. We're going to boost mythology by five. So he's going to be our mythology guy. And then whenever um, alchemy comes, he'll put the points in alchemy instead. So, uh, how many points do we have left? We have one point left. So, we're going to go ahead and do range combat. And there you have it. Alright, so... I don't know any Planet of the Apes characters. That's what I think of whenever I see this particular guy. What else do we got? I don't even know which ones are male or female. I would say that's female. Maybe that one too. That one's clearly male. So. So, have you ever heard uh, Eddie Murphy do the Wookin' Pana in all the wrong places? So, Eddie Murphy's got this skit where he's playing as uh, Huckleberry Finn. Um. Or what? No, the little rascals. He's playing as the little rascals, and so he's playing that um, the little black kid that can't um, that can't speak properly. So instead of saying "looking for love in all the wrong places," he's singing a, a, a album, and it's called "Wookin' Pana" and all. Anyways, that's so. Um, for lack of a better um, name, I know this is the most overused name for hairy anim hairy tall figures in all time, but. Um, that's what we're going to do. And then this is the perfect one for him. There are two kinds of people. Hunters and their prey. Let me and we're done. So we're going to add him to the party. I think when I made the first guy... I hope I didn't choose the same voice. Alright, i got to pause real quick. I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. All right, so we got four of our six characters. Now this is where I get a little I'm not sure. I've seen people. I've never tried it myself, but I've seen because we have all four m magic classes covered. We got the wizardry, we got the the divinity, the psionics, and the alchemy. Now, granted, the wizardry is embedded with the samurai. Um, I find myself always needing to, like, you know, people are taking damage, so, you know, I, I have that one caster that can just heal. So, I do want to make a bishop for that purpose. Now, you could argue, hey, why not make a priest? It's always a good argument. Um, it's just, to me, the bishop is just as good at divinity as the priest, if not better. Having the Valkyrie, which we're going to get early in the game, um is a little overkill on the divinity side because we're going to have the Valkyrie, the Lord, and the Bishop all doing divinity spells. It's a bit on the overkill. Um, but, um, I don't know, sometimes you can make the argument how could you ever have too many healing spells? So, seriously. Alright, so then what it does become, though, is of the two that we have left, um, a Bard is one of them because you want the ability to... Um, here's the thing. I often find in battles, I need two people to cast spells that first round. The bard can cast one spell, which will bless the party. Uh, and you saw me doing that with the priest. Uh, the first thing I did every time we did combat in that last video is I cast bless first. Well, the bard's going to do that now. The bard's going to be the one that casts bless. And then I can use the, the bishop, which is the other magic user, to cast something else. And usually it's enchanted blade. Um, which is a uh, mage type of spell. Now, you could have the samurai cast that. Um, <clears throat> it's just that the samurai is not going to learn it for quite a while. Um, 
So you'd have a large part of the game where you can't cast it until the samurai finally gets it leveled up enough that it can learn the spell. I also don't know where the book is. So, um, I mean, you could always just learn the spell through your spell points. Um, but that's the thing. That's what I'm trying to say is some people have shown me and they have, there's one guy, um, sounds like he has a German accent, um, when he speaks, but he's literally got this party that has no magic users at all. He only uses a bard. That's it. And then he uses the, the advanced classes that I just used here. I think he makes a Valkyrie instead of a Lord, but, um, He's doing the advanced classes like I just showed you, and uh, a bard, and then I think maybe he has a ninja instead of the bishop. Now the ninja is, you know, sitting back doing throwing criticals and stuff like that. Um, but basically he's got this party that does nothing but criticals. So he's, you know, got as many people who does criticals as possible. Because um, his whole strategy is just to insta-kill. If the first guy doesn't insta-kill it, then I got four other guys that are trying to insta-kill it every time they hit. It's a really cool strategy. I, um, Again, why is this game number one? Because there's just so many cool things that people do. There's this one person who just creates a ninja and solos the whole game with nothing but a ninja. I mean, it's just it's amazing what people do with this game. All right, but I'm going to stay a little bit more traditional. We're going to do a bard. Um, it is for sure going to be female. And um, the best bard, I think, is a hobbit. Um, but again, if you look at the bard, intelligence and senses, notice the theme. And um, speed, vitality, and piety don't matter. So the hobbit is the best because piety is the dump stat here. The speed and vitality, I want to have at least up a little. They get 40 bonus points. The human is also good, but gets less bonus points. Uh, five less, in fact. And they lose five points in speed, and they gain 15 points in piety. So you could argue that the human's better, but the piety it doesn't do much. Um, and the bard, in particular, is not using piety or intelligence for its spellcasting. Um, although, when you pick up the instruments, the instruments will tell you which skills they base the base it off of. So, um, I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. Um, in fact, I don't have a way to load. I want to be able, I want to save my progress. I have a game where I, I have a bard who has a bunch of instruments. Um, okay, let's just build the bard the way I want to build it, and then I'll check. The human bard might actually be better. But let's just real quick go through. The elf bard um, has low vitality. That's the only thing that stinks about the elf. Dwarf stinks. The gnome, uh, low speed. Now there is no such thing as casting, uh, doing the, um, the instrument twice. So a high speed on a barb bard is probably not that important. Um, so you could make a strong argument for a gnome here. Um, especially since I don't really use them for anything else. Uh, the intelligent or the piety is up higher. Everything else looks great. So yeah, gnome's not bad. 35 points. Hobbit gets 40 points though. So why would I not do a hobbit? Uh, fairy. Awful. Uh, lizardman. Awful. Although, some people have argued for the Lizardman Bard, because the Bard has needs a lot of vitality. So, there's 70 points here. Eh. Dracon. Actually, that doesn't look bad at all. The 15 points. The high vitality is the part that I'm attracted to here. That's an interesting option. Have a Bard that can breathe acid. So, Dexterity is the most important thing for a Bard. I'm only going to be able to put 5 points, so Dexterity is going to be 60. The Senses are going to be 60. Oh, I may have discovered something here. Let's come back to this one. Felper, of course, always looks great, except for the low vitality. 35 points, nothing to sneeze at. 
Um, the vitality is what kills it. Uh, the Ray Wolf looks great. 15 points, not much. I would argue that the Dracon is better. The Mook. Actually, the low speed probably doesn't hurt. Actually, the Mook may not be bad. Look at this. 14 points per. Why have I never considered this before? I think I've always valued speed more. Yeah, at higher low levels, it affects armor class. I think that's why. And your initiative in combat is how soon you go. So, for example, I want the bard to play his music early. Yeah, I think I let that influence me. That's not bad, though. The Hobbit also gets 40. Alright, so let's let's look at this. So the Hobbit would get 69, 69, and then 57 vitality. The Mook. 69, 69, 62. The speed is the big weakness. And then we were talking about this. Look, he already has 60. So I'm 18 points short there. And he can cast Acid Breath whenever he doesn't have songs to do. What an interesting idea. That's only three points less in vitality. That's four points less. That's less than a level. Five points less in vitality. That's still 14 points lower with five more vitality. Ugh. What a tough choice. This is an interesting idea. I very rarely play Dracon classes. You know what? Let's do it just for something different. Um, okay, you gotta put points in locks and traps, points in music, and points in communication. And if you'll notice, zero points were put into combat. Um, that's your bard. He's basically like a, a wizard in this game. Alright, so we got a female... Interesting. I never even picked these people. Alright, so... I don't even know what to name them. So, obviously you want to do something about dragons, usually. Because they're a Dracon class. Oh, hold on. That's why I don't want a Dracon. It's the resistances. My apologies. A lot lower in vitality, but... Yeah. We're doing hobbits. Sorry. Yep, 555. Five, five. I must have already taken... No. Oh, I think it's the elf I like. Yeah, that looks like a bard to me. All right. Um, I got that bug where I can't type. All right. So 
what do I want to do for the bard? So we're going to pick an Indian name for what looks like an Indian elf. And then... <laughs> All right, then. I'll join you as soon as I finish milking the cows and gelding the bulls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, and then last but not least, we're going to go with the bishop. The bishop has it where it needs it, right? Um, speed, vitality, and strength are low. The human is by far the best. I can tell you this without a lot of... I guess, you know, the elf gets 30. Um, the vitality is low. The strength is low. Don't necessarily need the strength, but the vitality is the bigger issue. Um... It's already 10 points higher in vitality, and I get 10 points less in bonus points. So, um, uh, I mean, I know I could spend those 30 points on maybe where it counts, um, and I get 10 points each. Like, this is where you really want to level up, right? So I could be at 65, whereas with the human, I'm only going to be at 62. That is a whole level behind. Um, and then the other option, uh, dwarf is not an option. The gnome is another option. You get 25 points. The speed is low. So how fast do I really want to cast my spells is really the, the question here. I mean, I can get the 64. It's not the worst thing. Um, the Hobbit, of course, you get back to that. Um, you're at 60. The fairy, um, interestingly enough, can go all the way up to 64. Now, if there was anybody that I would consider for it, it would be the fairy. The vitality being low does stink. Um, Lizardman, of course, minus 40. <laughs> uh, the Dracon, not going to work. The Felper, the vitality low is the part that stinks. Um, really doesn't get that high. 59. Ray Wolf only gets to 60. Otherwise, it's a very balanced character all the way around, right? I get to put 5 points somewhere else. The Mook only gets 3 points. I think something got screwed up. It's going to go back. Yeah, the Mook only has five points to dish out, that's why. Then the human has 20. But I can only get the 62. Uh, let's compare this. Where were we? We were looking at the Felper. The issue with the Felper is this dang thing, the Frozen. And of course, the character that would unfreeze is your caster, right? So my caster would constantly get frozen. I don't think that would be good. Actually, no, that's not the one. It was the Ray Wolf. Ray Wolf's got excellent defenses. Gets the 60. That's the problem. Uh, I need to compare the Ray Wolf with the human. What would I want my third skill? Do I want to improve speed? Well, it's always senses. Alright, so 40, 60, 60. I'm just trying to remember where everything's at. I saw changes in these three. Strength is five points higher. Vitality Vitality five points lower. Speed five points higher. Alright, so then we could get the 62 and 61. And with the Ray Wolf, we would get the 60s. So I'd be two, four, um, two points low on those. This is two points. These are the two most important skills, the intelligence and piety. 
So it'd be two points even lower if I do the Ray Wolf. Yeah, not gonna work. The human's better. Those extra two points may not seem like much, but they are. You only get three points a level. So that two points is two thirds of a level. Um, I want both of these to get to 100 before we can start improving the other stuff. Now, the vitality thing is an interesting one. Uh, the Ray Wolf would actually have more health. The other nice thing about the Ray Wolf is that we're using, just like I did with the Dracon, right? I'm just trying something different because I rarely use Ray Wolfs. I rarely use Dracons just because I value humans so much. Um, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do the Ray Wolf. You don't have to be perfect in this game. And I know I'm sounding like you do, uh, but you don't. So let's just live with it. Just as we are. Um, I do like how high that senses went. Alright, so... Male or female, it doesn't matter here. Let's do... Male. Mind Stab is the one spell you can't find in a book. So you gotta take it if you're gonna take it, so we'll do that to get the mental skills up. I am gonna find light in the monastery, uh, so don't worry about light. Uh, you're also gonna find stamina in the monastery. Um, I would love energy blast, I would love frost. I only have two points, and um, I do eventually find heal wounds, but I like having heal wounds from the start of the game, because uh, in my opinion, heal wounds is just a staple that you need to have, so I'm going to go ahead and take it. So yes, I spent both of my points, and this is where it really gets tough. I need points on everything here. And so the artifacts, I do get a bonus, and it's intelligence and senses. Um, and then for wizardry, you can see it's intelligence, piety, um, dexterity and intelligence for alchemy, and then senses and intelligence. So all of these are... Alchemy we're going to do with the ranger. The psionics we're going to do with the monk. So we're just going to specialize in these two. Wizardry and divinity. And then um, the realms are zero. So I'm going to spend put two points in divine and two points in mental. Because those are the two places we took spells in. And then uh, we got to jack up artifacts. The... The fact that I didn't put any points in artifacts hurts, um, but the getting the spells going is more important because once you get points into these realms, you don't need to put more points in them. Um, so if I could just successfully cast a few times, um, that will be helpful. Now, arguably speaking, these realm skills go up even if you don't successfully cast. So you could just cast a bunch of um, crap and. Uh, but the problem is if you're casting like that mind spell and it backfires, it hits yourself or it hits other people in your party and you can actually wipe yourself out, get yourself killed um, just because you miscast a spell. So putting a few points in is helpful. Um, the problem, of course, is we could go back to zero and then, you know, get the five points in there because being able to identify items is... Uh, <laughs> is good, but we're going to go ahead and... The five points into these two is the is the critical one. Because the, the higher these numbers are, the sooner you learn the new spells. All right. Um, and then, of course, the Mason Flail, all these things are good. It's just there's not enough points to go around. All right, we're going to go ahead and... Um, uh, you always see me having... Uh, a character named Mindy. That's my dog's name. So I always, when I see the dog, I want to name it after my dog. Um, so I'm going to do exactly that. Um, so we're going to just call it YouTube Mindy. And... I know I did that voice. It is wit, not strength, that make a solid lad. But I be lucky to have both. I did that one. I 
That's too Paladin-ish. Well, hello there. I think I hear the open road calling our names. <laughs> Isn't that a song? That's so annoying. I'm gonna do it. All right. And of course, it's a man. I named it after my female dog, but that's okay. We're still doing it. All right. That took an hour and 35 minutes. I told you it could easily take two hours. One last thing. You always want simplified NPC interaction. Basically, um, you can free text what you want to talk about, and it'll add keywords for you automatically if somebody says something, and that's all that does. Uh, Iron Man game is sort of what it says. Um, the moment that you die or get party wiped, your game is done. You can't reload. There's no saves. Um, so um, for how long this game takes, I don't like Iron Man at all because there could be glitches. There could be all kinds of things that go wrong. Um, and then expert, your skills get a, uh, basically your skills are at 0.6, their normal value. So you get basically a 40% penalty, um, which means you miss more. Uh, you have to cast spells more often. The enemies have more hit points. Uh, it's, some people like it and prefer it though, because, you know, the more you swing your weapon, the more your skill goes up. And so if you're having tougher battles that take longer, then your skill will actually go up. And so they think it balances itself out. But we're just going to do normal. I'm going to skip. And of course it always does that. It doesn't actually crash. It just goes to desktop. And here we are. Look very we're familiar, right? On a distant planet. No hope of ever getting home. Now that's what I call fun. <laughs> I already like that character. <laughs> Alright, so we got some decent items. The spear is disappointing. The short bow is good. Alright, so this is our lord, who we want to use Mason Flail, and he starts with a sword and a dagger. So that doesn't do us any good. Um, we can give him the bow, but we don't have any arrows for him yet, but that's okay. Um, and we have a leather halberd, which is better than his quilt tunic. Then we have the samurai here, who has a katana and a wakaz wakizashi. Both of them are pretty excellent. Um, he's very limited in what he can wear, um, but he can wear the quilt tunic, so we'll put that on. That's a four armor for him. And then we have our monk with the throwing stuff. Um, we can put this in. I can't equip both at the same time, but throwing is throwing. We got our archer. Uh, we got this. So here's what I meant. So the poet's loot uh, uses the sleep spell, but it doesn't say like what skills it relies on, so it looks like it just relies on your music skill. So I think we're good. And then, of course, our final dude. All right, um, our ranger will spot some rocks over here. Looks there. Right there. The chase begins. Attack. And we got some crabs. Angry, angry crabs. So. Um, we can at least do a mind stab. It's orange by putting those two points in. Otherwise, it would have been yellow. And then we're going to do Poet's Loot. And walk. I didn't get to rearrange everybody yet, so we're a little hosed there. Alright, I don't have to move anywhere. Hmm. 
Right, so tried to cast a spell and it fizzled. I don't think anybody's damaged yet, so there's no more spells to cast. And there we go. So we got our 111 experience just like before. There was rocks up here. Here we go. And you can see the artifact skill just shot up by a bunch of people. Alright. I forgot to fix this. So... In this case, I sort of like the way it is. Um, we have nobody defending our flanks, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bard on the left flank. Listening. The bishop in the back and the ranger. And then we're going to move the monk in the middle. What the now? lord on the right, Gee. and this Present. in the middle. Now, when you do this formation, basically the front line is gone, so the side flanks and the middle flanks all count as a front line. It's actually a bigger front line than putting everybody up here. When you have everybody up here, this is truly just your side flank. Um, but when this is empty, and monsters come in and they're they're in this zone, these guys can hit it. Um, it works. Alright, let's... We're backed up. Uh, nobody's damaged, but we're gonna rest. Just because the bishop needs his spell points back. The bishop is super um, weak. So, um, we're gonna create a save game called YouTube Start. Then we're going to create another save game called YouTube Rest because I like to save after I rest. Um, you have to save often in this game. Save scum, save scum all the time. And then um, we're going to do a YouTube Load Me and uh, that should be good enough for now. Alright, so same as before. We're going to go into the woods or water find some crabs and pick on them Tuna, oh there they are okay okay all right okay There's only two of them. It's usually more. There we go. Alright, I just realized... I don't want my monk to have a bow. So, we're going to take that off. I want the monk to be using fists. Um, so, take that away. I would swear there was more than two crabs in here. It looks like that's all we got this time. The game does have a little RNG when it comes to Oops. monsters in, a, in the ilk. Now, I'm dropping this stuff in. I don't remember how to drop it into the party slot. Um, and so this person's just accumulating a whole bunch of rocks. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give them all to her. And I don't think anybody else has a sling yet. Now, I forgot to mention, the, um, the samurai has this skill... Uh, well, first of all, fearless means that uh, the samurai will n never succumb to the fear spell. Um, the next one is the lightning strike. The samurai will attack something like four to five times in a row. Like, bam, 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 bam. It's it's RNG, but the the only way it can be triggered is the previous turn you had to have done a melee attack. It doesn't matter if it was against a different person or a different enemy. 
you had to do a melee attack in the previous round. And if you do a melee attack again this round, then there's a possibility that this lightning strike is going to trigger. And it's also based on your character level. So as your character level goes up, the chances of it happening goes up. Now one thing that I uh, brag about, or about this game, is that it auto-switches between, you know, your range attack and your melee attack. Well, the samurai is the one character you don't want to have switch to his bow. You want him to always do melee attacks, because then he's maximizing his use of that lightning strike. So you don't really want him to have a range Something attack. Does not smell right here. Look, it might kill us. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, I forgot to rest. This encounter will... All right, so we're going to walk. We're going to try to put him to sleep. I forgot to rest, so I don't have an attack. So I'm basically at the mercy there. All right, I just want to center him up. As long as nothing's red, it means they're all going to be able to hit. So he just missed twice. Lots of misses. That one didn't penetrate. There we go, that's what we want to see. Alright, one thing you might notice is that the bishop is in the back row, but is able to use its uh, staff to hit something that's in the front. And that's because the pole arms and this particular staff has what's called extended range. So it has a range of two, so it could go up to here and also to the front line. Um, these people with the swords only have a range of one, so they have to be in the front line. If I, for example, put the samurai in the back, uh, this would be red because there's nobody in range for him to hit. All right, we got three, four of them asleep. So as long as everybody's attacking only this guy, uh, none of these other ones were going to bother us, and that's perfect. So off we go. And we're getting some nice numbers because we have a uh, good mythology. All right, that was a lot of damage. All right, I don't have a lot of healing. I just got this one, but we'll go ahead and do it. So he's attacking twice because he has dual wield. All right, that was a double damage attack. You'll notice he woke up. All right, so the heal worked. Uh, I'm out of magic with this guy. See, there's no spells I can cast. Even though I have magic points, it's not enough to cast either of the spells I know. And then everybody woke up. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do the sleep spell again. All right, we killed one. Got that one hit. That's what we want. That we didn't want. Alright, two down. Uh, this guy's got 14. See, that one has 27. They have different health, even though they're both softshell crabs. I'm on it. <laughs> uh, it's never going to get old, is it? I thought I told okay. him to walk, but never mind. Maybe they did. Alright, um, so I'm out of healing spells, so we gotta make this happen. 
20, he's down to 15, so... Oh, 10. Missed. Missed again. Missed. 7. Ooh, 1. There we go. That's a tough battle. You could get party wiped by those crabs. And it's not your fault if you do. Uh, that's a tough battle right there. Um, I still like to do it early. And like I said, just save it before you get up there. I see something. Alright, so here we got our sling. I can't pick the dang thing up. There we go. Looks there. Battle axe. Red potion. Blue potion. Alright. So there's three things. can't identify. And then uh, we're going to give him a sling. So the two in the back will have slings. I need to find some arrows. Alright, and then the thing I forgot to do before. And yeah, I always save it right after a rest. You know, you do a big battle like that, um, sometimes I'll save it before I rest, right? Because I just don't want to do the battle again. That's, by the way, was not a big battle, but for a level 1 party, it's a big battle. Those crabs can, like I said, they can be a problem. So now we're going to go in. These green slimes are always here. beating like a big bass drum. A battle? How exciting! Very well. Alright, we definitely want to walk up. All right. And... Okay. So the spell fizzled. Very well. A spell fizzling is different than a spell backfiring, obviously. And then also, um, a fizzled spell can still make your magic skills go up. So it's n not always as bad as... I mean, other than the fact that you weren't able to get any damage in. So, if you recall the... The basic party that we did the first video um, was able to kill these things just slightly quicker. So, but look at this. We're getting some skills here, whereas the basic party didn't get skills, if you recall. Like, it took us all the way until we got upstairs before I was able to show you them earning skills. And right here, Ulrich already got close combat. One Punch got close combat. Wookie got his bow and his range. You see the difference between intelligence and senses and how... Um, it's not the class that's making them level up. It's the intelligence and senses that's causing them to get points when the basic party we created in the last video didn't get any points. And I do need to... position... and... we're going to camp again. I just need to get the mana points. I don't need to camp the whole time. And yes, um, basically the uh, the bishop in the early game is being carried by the rest of the party. I mean, he's contributing a little bit, but not a whole lot. And you will encounter random rats and bats up here sometimes. 
it's sort of a luck of the draw kind of thing. So with the bundle of arrows, he now has some arrows. Then this is a tough battle. I'm actually going to save it again, just because I don't want to walk around and re-pick up those arrows. And I may end up having to reload this. Very well. All right, so let's use our guns on this one. All right. And okay. Okay. Yep. So that was a backfire that could have caused us to take damage. So, <laughs> and then um, because I moved, uh, there wasn't enough energy for her to use her bard spell, so she didn't. So we hit him, but didn't penetrate. That's the thing, he's a l two levels higher than us. So we're hitting him, but not penetrating his armor. And you do get a penalty to your ability to hit when you're lower level. Which is exactly what's happening here. There we go. He's got to be close. I haven't been keeping track. Alright, and just because I can, we're going to heal somebody. Uh, we'll heal the monk. And there it is. And then we got the heal in as well. I'm still alive. <laughs> so we got 478, and boom. Sword increases to 17. So again, we're getting more points. Now, um, you might be wondering, what come everybody else? Remember, this is a basic character. So this is going to level up the most. These are uh, four advanced and an elite. So one basic, remember, doesn't ruin the party. Because since everybody else is advanced and elite... Um, it's not gonna um, cause a problem. Now, there's a nice little trinket. Um, you can also read the bookshelves and the books themselves. Um, there is some nice flavor uh, nice with it. And I see something. All right. So I'm going to get off into the corner here, but before that happens, we're going to learn a spell. Perfect. So I just learned the light spell, and you can see um, this is the number of magic points he has, and so he was able to get five magic points in fire, um, which is the same as the other two, and um, before we rest, well, here you can see the artifacts went up. So before resting, we're going to cast the light spell. This is terrible. And just cast again. So now there's light in effect, but it's a level power one. If I do another power one light, it will not advance my skills. But instead, I'm going to do a power two light, and that contributes towards advancing your skill. And then now I don't have enough mana points to do power two. Now, um, I don't quote me on this, but... Um, I think the way skills go up is like there's you need like eight points of something in order for a skill to go up and so when you swing your weapon or you cast a spell it's not saying you need to cast your spell eight times you just need to get eight points and so there's points that are allocated based on your your character level your your intelligence skill your census score like everything's multiplied by by a decimal and um and then those decimals get added together, and they add up, and um, so you could cast a spell that's like level two power, and you can maybe get 1.2 points towards your eight, and then once you get over that eight threshold, that's when it tells you the skill went up. How did I get that number eight? It was some guy in a forum who was trying to to like reverse engineer the code, and whether or not he was accurate or not, I cannot vouch for, but it sort of works that way. Um, 
by my casting that spell and the skill didn't go up, um, I'm not worried about it because I actually think the skill, like it does save something somewhere and it increases the chance that the skill's going to go up next time I cast the spell. All right. Um, so with the bard, this is a tricky one. Uh, you want to raise up your vitality uh, because the bard uses a lot of stamina. But the dexterity and senses, of course, are the highest and most poised to to get you where you need to go. Um, the bard's also going to probably be using bows and stuff later in the game. And the senses only helps with that. Um, but right now, dexterity is for sure the primary trait. And um, if you'll notice, intelligence does help with uh, range combat and also music. Um, do I want to raise intelligence though right now? No, I don't. In fact, I want to raise the, um, the vitality instead. So we're going to do those two. Um, I, I debate on this all the time. But uh, the vitality is going to help that stamina go up. And also, it's nice to get the extra hit points. Locks and traps. Always put the three points there. Always three in music. Always three in communication. I really, these other skills are just going to have to level up on their own. Alright. We still don't have a lot of er anything. Um, this axe, I like to give that to the ranger, and as a secondary weapon, the primary weapon is the bow. But if anybody ever gets up at close, like gets behind us in the flank, um, the ranger gets a penalty to the arrows. So the axe um, is a good thing. To fall back on and I don't have any other character using axes so why not right and then of course um, now that we did all that let's rest and I think we're at the exact same spot where I quit the last video um, but only one character leveled up this time so you see the difference between a basic and an advanced party right the basic party would have all leveled up by now. Um, they absolutely did in the in the playthrough I did for you, and that's where I quit. But let's keep going. All right, so when you get to a crossroads, you can always click on this, and that pulls up a map. Um, it can be confusing to look at at times, but we're right here, where this little green dot is, and we are facing to the left, as you can see there. Um, if I go right. It's just a bunch of, like, um, spokes. The left is the quickest out of here. Um, but it's basically a circle. The left, like I said, is the way out. But if I go up this way, it's a circle. What we want to do is we want experience points. So I'm not in a hurry to leave. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go left, and then I'm going to backtrack. There's always goo in here. So here we go. This encounter will be... And this should level up my other guys. Because this is another one of those level 3 slimes. Just like the one we just fought. Okay. All right. ah. Yep, that hurt. 27. 21, 16, backfire, okay. fourteen, ten, that was the dagger. This usually never works. Four. One. <laughs> Finish it. There it is. There it is. Exciting. Our hero has achieved great things. Delightful. Splodded. I become even more deadly. Ah, the bishop didn't get enough. Alright, so we got a dagger, which none of our characters, because we don't have a rogue, 
is very dagger centric. Although the um, the Lord right now, we don't have any maces for him, so the Lord is using everything but a mace so far. And what we're hoping is there's RNG when you open these. So we're hoping to find a mace in one of these. And right there's one, right there. Oh my gosh, exactly like I asked for. This is not common, but uh, usually you find one eventually, though. Alright, so a bunch of artifact skills went up. And we're going to flip to the Lord here and put the Warhammer in for the primary. And it does have to say it's allowed to be a secondary weapon. There's only two Mason Flail secondaries in the entire game but one of them you can buy in the first town we visit. So as soon as we get out of the monastery and we find the two NPCs, in that same area there's going to be a hammer. And the hammer is going to be one of the best uh, secondary weapons in the game, so we'll be able to use that. Um, this rapier, by the way, is a good sword, so we're going to replace the short sword here for the bard with that. And the leather halberd is way better than a cloth shirt. So we got that going for us too. And then look at this. I was able to identify this. And that. And that. Oh my gosh, I just identified almost everything. So I don't know why um I I didn't even level up yet. And I'm already identifying stuff. I was able to identify more. Excellent. And then you could do this to sort them. So everything could be sorted. Uh, that's helpful when you're looking for certain things. All right, um, let's level up before we rest. Now, monsters could be roaming around, and you can get another encounter while you're sitting here waiting. Um, obviously, when you have these screens open, everything's paused. Okay, so for the Lord, uh, we're doing strength and dexterity. And he's got a long way to go before he's going to cap out. Uh, this is, again, a weakness for him. And uh, Mason Flail, we definitely want to jack that up as much as we can. His sword and dagger's going up, even though that's not what we plan on using. And then, uh, for now, until this comes up, he can put all his points into duel and close combat. So we're just going to get him to be as good as he can. And then for the Monk, we actually are going to do either speed and senses or speed and dexterity. That's the tricky part with the monk. Um, these senses, of course, helps with the critical strike and the close combat and the psionics, which is all three a monk thing. Uh, the dexterity, of course, will help those fists to hit um, the two hit chance. I mean, it is six points, so here we could do actually one better. Let's just do two each. All three of them are important. So uh, it's going to take a little longer to get to 100, but um, that's still, I think, good progression. And here, yeah, we got... We're going to for sure put three points in martial arts, and then two two, and two. Like that. And for the samurai, I think we got a similar deal. We're going to do two, two, do I really want to do senses? Yes, two. Okay, three, then one, two, three, four, five, six. And the ranger. This one's an easy one. Dexterity, speed. And then we want three points in scouting. And we're going to go ahead and do one, two, There we have it. All right, get into the corner. 
Are there any spells we can do? Nope, just light. Um, this power level one, right? Yep, so we can do two. This is terrible. This is terrible. Alright. Okay. Spells again. Level two didn't work. <laughs> it's all right. Even a failed cast helps. All right, so you want to go into like the center of the hallway and just walk up down the hallway here. This is the circle I was telling you about. So I could go left, I could go straight. They all take me to the same place. So now I'm coming up and there's, there's some bad guys. And... Okay. Six health points each. That's not bad. The reason I love this party is I basically have three characters that attack twice. In my front line. And up I go. Look at that. Dual weapons, martial arts, critical strike, all went up. Range combat. So that means critical strike must have triggered. Let's scroll up. Here's the combat chat. So. I don't think... Maybe it didn't. Maybe it just went up because it went up. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a mystery sometimes, but... That's excellent. So now the bishop went up. And with the bishop, it's simple. We're doing this. But we got a long way to go until these get to 100. And then, like I said, we can learn another spell. And I want all of them. Like, I, I want to click, click, click and take all of them. But you have to be, when you're playing a bishop, you have to be really selective and you have to save your points and wait until you find a book. That's part of the reason why this is an expert character. If you're playing your very first game and you chose a priest and a mage like the way I showed you, you can spend your points and it doesn't matter as much. Because um, even at, once you learn, get to level 7 spells, you're going to gain levels after that and use your points to get your level 7 spells. Um, so with this one, though, you got to save your points. Um, okay, if I had to pick one, which one would I like? Uh, the Energy Blast and um, the Frost, or the Acid Splash, is the two I like the most. The Itching Skin is interesting, um, but it's more of an adjutant. It costs enemies, lessening their ability to attack and defend, so it's like a debuff. The Acid Splash, of course, is a spray. It hits multiple enemies. Uh, it's one of the few early sprays we have. The terror also hits multiple enemies. Anyways, um, uh, so I'm not going to take a spell. I'm going to hold on to the point. And that was just a confirmation message. And then uh, we're back to here again. And I could continue to put points at each realm, because like I said, a zero in each realm stinks. But right now I'm going to just do three, three, and three. We're going to always maximize these, and then let's get that one cranked up as well. And then um, what that allows me to do, hopefully, yep, see I still can't re identify that one thing. Um, now you might be wondering, why is it that we identify so much more stuff and the basic party couldn't? Um, uh, don't forget, she has a 25% bonus to her artifact skill right here. So that lets her, for every five points that's in here, she's at 15, so for every five points she gets one bonus point. So so that that's actually like having a 20 artifact skill for your characters if you do a basic. Alright, so we're up to here. Just to help you, 
this is what I mean by the circle. So uh, you turn left here, these two are going to merge, then it goes out here, and then it comes in and in like a, like a comb. So we're just going to keep going this way. Those bats was a random encounter, by the way. Like, some things like those goos are always where they are. The bats were totally a random encounter. If you're ever sleeping and I see something. something happens, that's a random encounter. Alright, so we got some corals. We have no coral I with you. Something. So see how we're spotting stuff? Like, you could, if you didn't have a ranger, you could just turn this on, which puts the search mode on. Look there! And you would see these as well. Didn't see anything. And that's him saying that the search didn't yield anything. Um, let's turn that off though, because you got a ranger, you don't need it. Um, and so yeah, you could you could be smart enough to say, hey, you're in a room. Of course, that's where the stuff is going to be. All right, so. So the bishop, you can see this turned orange. This is terrible. It turned orange because the magic skill, even though the realm skill didn't go up, the magic skill did. And there we go, we just successfully cast a level 2 light. So now I would need a 3 to raise the skill. And then of course we got a few extra magic points because of our level up. We went from 5 to 7. And, and some of that has to do with the higher level, but it also has to do with the fact that we're... Um, um, I think it's primarily because this here, the 15. So I think we get um, one third. I don't know what the formula is. I, I don't want to guess. But the reason we have seven magic points is because we're improving our magic skills and also our character level might have some kind of play in it. I don't know exactly what. I see something. The way you would test that is you have your five magic points, you level up and you don't put any of the points in magic abilities and see if you still only have five afterwards. It's hard to look at those because you, uh, ooh, I don't find those very often. They're not the best in the world, but they're better than a, a sandal. Okay, and then one other thing I haven't talked about is your alchemist can mix potions. Um, but you need 15 points of alchemy to start your first mixing. And in case you're lost, that's what we just did. So now I need, I turned the wrong way, I need to turn right. So we're going to turn around. And this is another random party. Not uncommon to run into. Yeah, we got five slimes. So this is a bigger battle. Alright, so we're going to do a walk. Poet's loot. The three aren't anywhere to be seen. The mind stab costs three. Okay. So I'll be able to cast this twice now. And casting it twice is twice the opportunity to light raise up my skill. And remember, those three slimes are off vision. So we're, they're they're moving. They're just we can't see them. All right, um, let's make it happen. Only nine hit points. Should be easy. That one only has five. All right. With pleasure. So I don't know where these other slimes are. I hear him. There's one. Got another one dead. 
These guys are a little on the easy side. I'm on it. Okay. Remember, you want to use your skills. So even though these guys are easy, I'm still casting spells. I'm still trying to do damage. I want one of them to hit me, even as for the slightest bit of damage. Very good. I didn't even get to use my spell. Alright, so close combat went up. Oh, see that little white dot? That's a symbol that something's on the ground. So I missed. Ah. Those look like Kamoi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Chamois. Chamois. Gloves. C H A M O I S. However you pronounce that. Is that French sounding? All right, and yeah. I see something. Some people argue, like I said, these uh, hidden items are in obvious spots, so you can find most of them, and you don't need a ranger. I happen to like the archer class, so it doesn't bother me too much. Maybe you want to give him a bow. All right, I got a bow there. I want, I think, for her to have a bow instead of the sling. And then this is the one that's going to do... Since he's doing throwing for this, we're going to have him use... You know what? Why, thank you. We're just going to do it now. I see something. So, because the alchemist can make potions, what you do is you mix potions together. And, like, one of the easiest potions formulas is you can take your light heal and your moderate heal, you mix them together, and you make a heavy heal. So, I'm trying not to spend my potions uh, as much as possible. Okay. And there's a book of stamina. search around the room and then this remember we haven't had to unlock a trap yet and this unlocks traps at plus 10 but any class that has pick lock picking can't use it so I can't give it to my bard for example or my rogue or the gadgeteer or the ninja I can only give this to somebody who normally can't pick locks so if you ever create a game where you don't have a rogue in your party or no luck picking ability whatsoever this would be the hat that you would put on and like I said there's a rogue NPC in the first city that you can pick up uh, but for us we're just gonna go ahead and put it in our inventory and in case you're keeping track So we did this, and now we're finally on our way towards the next phase of the game. There's some nice darts I here. See something. And then we have Potion of Cure Poison. Okay, we got another one of those split off things. So it's a little spider web. This direction is the way out. The, and then we got another sort of this situation here. So I'm going to turn right. We're doing this for experience points and to find as many items as we can. Even if it's an item we can't use, we want it so we could sell it. So this is the first room. It says, do not feed the ray packs. Uh, the ray packs have horns. Um, they look like friendly demons in this game. Um, 
And of course, looks, there. looks like that Rapax wasn't fed very well. Some hungry creature stripped the body to the bone. Alright, so got some items. Got some leather boots, which are excellent. Alright, I'm gonna hit I. Let's get the Lord equipped. And then we have a tattered note. I have failed. The tomb is locked, and they caught me before I could find the key. To make matters worse, this damn Hagardi only feed me once a day. At this rate, I will starve to death in a matter of days. Tell the Templars that the weapons are still a threat to Al Sedexus. Alright, so we'll just put the note in his... And we got a Ring of Protection. Always good. I like to give it to my caster. And notice that it causes the AC of the hand to go up. And then the, there's an average AC. So... The higher the AC, the better. So if you exceed 70% of your carrying capacity, or become fatigued, it decreases your AC. Now this is your carrying capacity here, I have a 3. Um, this is a stable number. Um, this will turn blue, and then eventually yellow, and then red. And so will the load, because right here is your load. And this represents how much you can carry. So exceeding 50% negatively affects your initiative, chance to hit, and number of swings and number of attacks. And then 70% uh, negatively affects your armor class. So that's what I mean. Um, it'll get worse and worse as it goes. And then you can look here to see how we're doing. So right now he has a minus one to his to hit. Like the Lord, for example, has a plus two, plus one. This is the offhand. The primary hand, this is the mace. And then this is, um, oh, I'm sorry, that was the um, samurai. And then this is the mace. That mace is 5 to 12 damage. Really, really good. Gets a plus 30% to his damage. So, and right there you can see he has 4 kills. He has 5, 5, 4, 2, and 3. Man, we killed that many things. Alright. We are done visiting the Raypax. Although, I would argue that maybe whatever was eaten, whatever ate that thing might have been the Raypax, and... I don't know. Because here's another skeleton here. Uh, this is the one we started, right? So we went down that, we came around, and now we have this. So... To the left is the way out. Um, but we're going to go straight first. Finish up our comb here. Just to help you out. See, it's another comb. So this is where the Raypax was, and this is... And by the way, you can always, um, you know, put a note. Like that. It's very cool. There's a battle on the other side here. But this is our first trap. So Vijaya is our lock and trap person. Has a skill of 8%, which is pretty poor. We have two lock picks we need to do. So that is currently in place, and now we need this one to also go in place. But then this one falls. Now what keeps him up and what keeps him down, it's not a dexterity thing. It's just purely a number. So they're rolling dice and and the 8% is a crappy number. So if you do it enough times, it'll work. If you had your rogue, that would have been quicker. This is a one man. But it works. With pleasure. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so we got three roaches. The roaches aren't bad, but some of the advanced roaches that are higher level, they're painful. You do massive damage with those pinchers. 
And of course we just missed twice. Of course, that backfires. I right about that embarrassment. <laughs> Alright, so see how this is still flashing? It's because I am going to hit one of my own characters. Here it comes, see? I hit myself. That was awful. Okay. Alright! <laughs> So I just leveled up with the bishop, and the bard's already level 2. Or level 3, I mean. But the average level is we got 1 level 3, and then 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Now, there is one thing you can do. So the bard is ready to level up. You can just choose not to level up the bard. It stays level 2. Then you can wait until everybody else levels up, and then you never have the average party penalty. So, I know I, um, I explained that you don't want to mix experts with basics, but that's one of the methods you can do, is just, you know, wait until the expert levels up, and then level everybody up all at once, and then you keep your average party level right where it's supposed to be. Alright, so the bard, we agreed we we're going to do that, and then I think I was going to do senses with this one. Or no, it was Vitality. And again... The locks and traps are not nearly as good as what the Rogue would have had. But as you just saw, we were able to get it open. It just took a little more engineering. Alright, so we successfully did that. Um, we got a light. 674 turns remain. So, I'm going to go ahead and rest. You've got to be careful. After you rest, things spawn. Especially the roaming monsters. Alright, so now we're, there's one right there. Battles will be as easy as finding flies on the cow. I mean, finding flies on a okay. cow is pretty easy. All right, very well. It's only got two hit points. <laughs> We're gonna clobber this thing. <laughs> And it dropped rocks. That rocks. Alright. Knock fix. This we give to our bard. And basically the way these work is there's only three uses of them. But um, if there's a trap that's too hard to lockpick, or oh, sorry, a lock that's too hard to pick, um, you could use the lockpicks. And again, this game is thinking about what if you didn't ro put a rogue in your party? Well, here you are. You got a door you got to get through. We could click use item and use those lockpicks and then what that would do is that would actually cause these to automatically move up and they stay up forever uh, and then you can... all you need is just one of these to stay up and then you raise the other one. It's an automatic... like it would be a waste to use it here. <laughs> Even if it's going to be frustrating for a little while, it'll eventually work. And sometimes you'll see the skill go up just while we're doing this. And yeah, this is just RNG going against us here. Here we go. Alright, big, big battle coming up right now. Huge battle. I can get party wiped here sometimes. 
So let's go. They were ready for battle. It's against Mr. King Crab. Okay. All right. With pleasure. So his range is two. So we gotta move up to him or we can't hit him. <laughs> yes, he has 109 hit points. We're making good work here. Usually we miss him a lot. Oh, that's even better. And he stayed asleep. That's even better. Alright, so I'm going to cast the Mind Stab again. <laughs> so by him being asleep, I think he loses his chance to attack. So we've gone two rounds with him not attacking. I put him to sleep in the first round, so he lost his chance to attack. And then he was woken up in the second round, which he's going to be able to attack now, but in the second round, his attack was gone. Because he started the round sleeping. So, um, we're doing okay. Uh, I don't even have anybody to heal, which is good. And I'm out of uh, mind spells, so it's all physical attacks from here. So I do have some damage, so I'm going to go ahead and let's get in a heal. Oh okay. my lord. I could do another music thing. Um, I, it'll use up a lot of her stamina. With it being down to 19 health, I feel really good about how we're doing here. Although, now the damage is starting to come in. Okay, now we just knocked it unconscious. <laughs> That's even better, so let's just trash this thing. He's KO'd right now. And there it is. I'm still alive. Alright. Um, I just realized something. I forgot to learn my new spell. Perfect. So now we got seven spell points in the stamina or water category. Um All right. I see something. So we got artifact skill going up. All kinds of stuff. Uh This is awesome. terrible. So he failed to heal wounds. Stamina doesn't do anything right now. Looks there. We got a short bow. Stink bomb. And arrows. Now some people are really big fans of these bombs. You have to have a good throwing skill to use them, or otherwise you hurt your own party. They're basically spells. So there's a Noxious Fumes power level 3 spell. Um, I don't remember who does Noxious Fumes. It's probably the, um, the Alchemist. Um, so it's the same exact spell that a, a caster can cast, except you can have a ninja that throws it, right? Because they got really good throwing skill. And you can have a character that doesn't normally cast spells um, throw one of these, and it's like the equivalent of casting the spell. And um, sometimes those things, there'll be like, you know, six of them. Like here, there's eight of these sticks. These are probably icicle sticks. That's usually what we find here. Alright, and then this here. We're going to open this door, and this should look familiar to you. We're back at the beginning, where we came in. That was where we fought the, um, um, the goo. We came up this ramp, 
there were some arrows here and then we went down this hallway all right so we're back here so we went this way and did all this did all this came through and then now we open this door that was bolted shut so basically it's a shortcut so now we don't have to go through the long winding maze and it's yet another reason why this game is the best of all time so they even think of crap like that alright this is what I was looking for we found a light crossbow we need to give this to somebody he has a bow we're gonna give it to him and we're just gonna toss the bow in there give the hundred arrows to you and the crossbows to you um, if anything it's just distributing the um, the ammunition better we got an archer that's always going to be using arrows we got a bard that will at least use arrows some of the time this guy will use corals this one's using stones this one's also using stones but it's going to be casting spells most of the time there you go I just identified something and uh, this one we're not going to do any range attack at all and that's an arguable thing I'm sure some people will be like you're nuts okay um camp save the rest spell again or save the rest all right at the top of this thing is a very powerful boss it's called Gregor and it's the ultimate test when you're designing a new party is you want to get face this Gregor and see how well you do with your new party um, these little dudes here are just randos so okay okay Only five health points each. Shouldn't be too tough. And it's always good. Nice to get experience points and opportunity to get her skills to level up. So that one had eight. Two down. Three down. I, oh, he already woke up. Well, I'm when you cast a, a spell on him, look at that. Look at all these skills that went up. Bam, 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 bam. That's intelligence and senses, folks. I can't stress that enough. So like I said, at the top, big boss. We got one more place we can go, and I like to stretch it out as long as I can because that big boss is not easy. Um... So we're going to go back here, find another sling, which is fine, and then get into this area, which is a big open area. Don't worry about the creatures, they're in the water. They're basically fish swimming around in the water. Now what do you suppose this funny little gadget does? And then over here I think are some rocks. So even basic plain rocks still improve your artifact skill when you're identifying them. Okay, don't press this button yet. That causes the bridge to go up. Um, see how there's a little path up here? Um, you want to explore the other side of the bridge first before you hit the button. Now there's, like I said, there's creatures in the water that they keep seeing. We will kill them. Uh, but we're going to go down this pathway and clear this out first. And there's no creatures here, but what you find is stuff. So we got ourselves a blue potion we couldn't identify, some ale, and stamina potion, and this little chest 
is a bit of a doozy. So let's make sure we save. Trap. All right, so this is a trapped chest. So um, eventually you're going to get some spells that you can cast that help out. We don't have any of those yet. So we're going to have our best 11 percenter here inspect the trap. Okay, so the green is, uh, the bard thinks for sure that these two elements are in the trap and isn't sure about these two. And just so you know, you can click on the different traps and you can see where the different mechanisms are. Um, I can tell you for certain that this is an early game trap, so the dagger scatter is the correct trap. So if she says it's these two elements, these are just um, red herrings. Like, she thinks that they might be something, but they really aren't there. So let's try to disarm this device. Now let's try to disarm the other one. So she tripped a trap, but still got it open. So that's still a victory, even though it was a painful one. And we just got a leather halberd. Weighs 18 pounds. There we go. There we go. All right, and then um, because Listening. we got damaged, that gives us an opportunity to heal. So what you heard was he failed, and then he succeeded. He cast twice in rapid succession. And here you can see his divine magic skill increased to three, which is excellent. So, um... Don't think it's going to happen. All right, so... Then the light is power level two. We can try power level three now. And we just succeeded. <laughs> that light's going to stay active forever. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I think that's all I can do, so now we're going to rest. All right, so we go back here. Like, let's say we want to heal wounds. This is now orange. I think it was before. Um, but it's getting better and better. Every time we level up, it's painful and slow with the bishops in the early game. You gotta be patient. If you started the game with a priest and a mage like I did in the basic game, that priest comes out with green circles and can cast everything successfully from the get-go. I mean, it really is an advantage. It truly is. So now we're going to hit the button, now that we cleared all that out. Now, the button at the top is broken, so you can't hit the button up there, but this button still works. So if you ever made a mistake and needed to bring it back down, you just have to come down here. The button up there will make you go, oh my gosh, I can't lower it, but just come down here and you'll be able to lower it just fine. Okay, so we can go up and face the boss, but I want to come here and do one thing first. Got these fishies swimming around in here. There they are. And they will come across as friendly. And we're going to go ahead and do that. And okay, that. And... All right, so we could move. Yeah, let's move. I'm burning to kill. All right. I don't know how they... Oh, yeah. The bard's in the front line. I forgot. So these guys got 20 hit points. They're not... Okay, now we just put all the fish to sleep. You do double damage when they're asleep like that. Obviously it wakes them up. I like the little blood effect. Alright, and we're going to just keep going. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to keep going. Oh, 
Another one down. Of course, I ended up waking up the other one. That wasn't the smartest thing. And I got another mind stab, so let's keep going. I want to cast a spell right away. Get the stamina spell in. Because look, this guy doesn't have full stamina yet. So you gotta just got the spell in there twice. I think I'm improving. Our hero has achieved delightful splendid. Alright, so we just got some level ups. Got some good stamina in. Now let's get some heals. And this is what I mean by training your character. All I have to do is camp. I don't have to heal my guys, but I'm going to heal them anyways because I want the skills to rise on their own. You have to get those skills to go up on their own. You don't have enough points to do it all yourself. All right, so we just went down a waterfall and found the most powerful thing in the game, Resurrection Bowder. Those sell for two grand each. And then, uh, while we're here, I am going to level up the Lord. We're going to do Strength and Dexterity. And again, Mason Flail. Just going to get all those very solidly going. Samurai. Oh, by the way, you can actually change your class. So if I don't want to be a samurai anymore, I can switch to a ninja. Um, that's You could do dual class in this game. Alright, so um, this is the one where we're doing 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. And yeah, I'm going to do 5 points. 2, 2, 2. Then with the monk... Two, two, and two. Two, two, and two. And the ranger. Three, two, Two and two. All right, and then we're gonna rest. This is like the safest spot in the game to rest. Monsters are never gonna spawn in the middle of the waterfall. All right, and then we just ride the waterfall down. Don't go too aggressive, or otherwise you take damage. You gotta let yourself like slide on down. All right, so now we're back at the bottom where we started. So we just hit the waterfall. Um, we did that in the early game. The only thing that's left is there's a little campfire right up here. And that's what we're going to hit. Not exactly next, but pretty darn close. And we come in. This should look familiar. Around this corner was the goose. Unless there's roaming monsters, all this is going to be clear, but don't be surprised run into rats or bats. Um, it does happen, especially right here in this room. And then, because we opened this door, boom. We're right back where we were, and then look at that. There's some goo. Let's go give it a welcome. Winning this battle will be as easy as... I'm on it. I... Even though it's easy battle, okay. we're gonna still take the points. All right. All right. These are very easy. 
I'm trying to get skill points in, and I'm, you know, I should probably have my guys, like, defend so I can get my spells cast, but that's okay. That's neither here nor there. That was an easy battle. All right, and then we come back up here, and as you remember, we now have the big boss battle. Make sure you save it. Always save it. In fact, I'm going to do the uh, YouTube load me on this one instead. It doesn't hurt to have a second save you do every now and then, uh, largely because what if you screw up and you accidentally save the game when you shouldn't have, or you're in a situation you thought you could get out of, but you can't? Yeah, his name's Gregor. And he's got 129 hit points, and he's level 5. Uh, we are... what? Level 3? And he's level 2. Okay. Okay. Very well. Now, what really stinks is sometimes when you do this battle, these randos will end up joining you. So you'll have these roaches that are coming from down the hall, and they're just like roaming monsters that just randomly, you know, bad luck. It was just absolutely bad luck. Uh, that's the worst. It's just why you want to save the game before you come into this room. Um. Here we go. This guy hits for hard damage. And he hits everybody in the party. Because he has reach. So the people in the back row are not safe against him. We got him down to 101, which is good. If we can get him to sleep. Perfect. So now he's... See? He's asleep, and we got him actually confused. Which is, um... Uh, sometimes they'll attack people in their own party. Uh, obviously, he's a one-man party, so... Um, but the, the good news here is he lost his attack that first round, and this next round is basically a free-for-all. So we can all get free attacks in, because even if we wake him up, uh, he's not going to get any attacks this round, and whoever hits him first is going to get to do double damage. There it is. Oh, look right there, right there, speed of lightning. His lightning attack just happened. He hit him four times. Did you see that? Like, he he dodged one of them, but the samurai just did a, a four times attack. Because his lightning strike occurred. I don't know if you saw that right here. So, Jeff moves with the speed of lightning. Remember I said the previous turn, he has to do a melee attack. And then on the next turn, he has a chance of this happening. And it just did. So he did four attacks. And three of those four times, he hit for 15 damage. That is awesome. And he's dual wielding, so um, he hits with both of his weapons. And then, of course, he, he did miss. Or his other weapon did no damage. So the first attack, uh, he dodged one of them, but he hit with three of them. And then, of course, his offhand uh, missed. But that was excellent. To get 15 damage on this guy... Oh, he's no longer insane. He's down to 57. Uh, we're doing fantastic. Uh, nobody's even been hit yet, but, you know, fingers crossed there. Uh, we could do a stamina spell. Try to level that up a little bit. And let's try to put him asleep again. I'm very happy. Uh, three damage. The thing is, he attacks like three or four times. Excellent. So, there we go. 22 damage. That was the Lord. The character that everybody thinks sucks. Right, no one... Well, actually, some people did take some damage, but I'm going to go ahead and do another stamina spell. Okay. He's almost dead. We should get him. There he is. Wow. 1,300 experience points. 
the J I got a level. Mindy got a level. Excellent. Dual weapons for Ulrich. One punch. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That was a fantastic battle. All right. Everything went my way there. Trust me. And if you buy this game, this battle will give you fits. Um, but uh, that one, everything went our way. All the RNG worked our direction there. Um, okay, so... Can't do stamina anymore, but let's do heal wounds. I don't remember who got the damage. Was it him? They're so close to full health, I can't even tell. 31, 25, 26, 12. There we go. Pick the right one. Alright. Bard. So this is what's crazy. She's level 4 now. These are all level 3, but as I've been saying, she's not going to drag up the party, so no worries. And then get that intelligence and piety up. And see, all these extra spells are showing up now. Um, the reason is because I keep raising the, the wizardry and divinity, and um, I explained that with the spreadsheet in the first video. So there's so many spells I want to take here. The magic missile's awesome. Um, detect secrets. It's not awesome, but it's a great way to like level up the mine. Identify item and divine trap are both excellent. Uh, missile shield is a must-have. Um, so, I have two points. Do I spend them both now? Uh, my answer is sort of yes. So, um, no matter what, uh, we want enchanted blade. Now remember, every single one of these I'm mentioning, there's a book for. Except for the Mind Stab, which I already took. Um, so if I'm patient, I can save my points and go get the book. But the thing is, is with the uh, development of the Bishop, is you want spells in each of these realms. Something that she can just cast and start to level up the skills. And if you wait until you get the books to finally start leveling up the skills, you're going to have a really weak bishop. So the Enchanted Blade is just the most awesome thing to get. So I will take that. And in doing so, it does increase my um, mana points to 12. The Missile Shield is just a must-have. And it's also going to help me start raising up my Air Realm. I have my Fire Realm. Uh, these two realms I don't have covered yet. Well, actually, I got the Stamina here. So I'm starting to get the water. It's the Earth Realm. It's the only one that's the weak one. And I frankly... You know, Earth is more of an alchemy thing anyway. So, um, so I'm going to do Missile Shield. And now I got um, all... I got five of the six realms covered. And then we're going to go three points in Artifacts. And then get that to 18 and 18. And here you can see the fire is still a zero. Water is zero. Air, earth, all of them are zero. So um, the spells are going to fail way more than they're going to succeed. we got this dang power three light still going on. Um, but this one, Missile Shield, you can cast outside of combat. So, And there, I just successfully cast it. It didn't make the skills go up. Um, but what that does is that protects us from... Um, well, here, you can just see it. It... Um, Forms a magical shield of thickened air, which deflects non-magical missiles. So, really good against archers and stuff like that. Um, it's a must-have. And the fact that I can cast it out of combat, it's just like this fire spell, but these don't last nearly as long. See, that one's only going to last 31 more turns, while this one's lasting 556 more turns. So I'm going to cast this quite a bit, and in fact I'm out of... Um, mana points, so I'd have to camp to be able to cast it again. This is tricky. I can only do that in combat mostly, or immediately after. And then Enchanted Blade, I can cast in or out of combat. So, there we go. So we got that going, 
And then um, Enchanted Blade, by the way, enhances the ability of all party members to hit their target and penetrate the armor. So the penetrate part is the, the big value on this one. Enchanted Blade is must, must, must. Um, and it is a, um, a mage spell. So remember when we made a priest and a mage? Uh, this is one of those ones you want to get with your mage if you're doing a basic party. Okay, um, we are three hours in on this game. This is a good spot to stop. I am going... I hear a monster walking around. I don't know where it is, but I hear it. I see some sort of beast. There they are. Crabs. <laughs> this will be an easy. All right, fair enough. Okay. All right. I'm on it. Six of them. He just hit myself again. This is the painful part. Five damage, and then look. Made myself go insane. I don't want to cast spells while I'm insane. That's a relief. All right, the insanity went away, which is good. No mind stab left, but we can do stamina okay. while we're in battle, so I can just constantly cast spells. <laughs> And cast stamina when you know your party's got it covered. And this is not a hard battle. Please watch there, you coin that. It backfired. I'm on it. Okay. That Lord does amazing damage. Okay. Just keep casting stamina. Let the rest of the party do their thing. Even the bard is finishing him off. Like a boss. These are level 2 guys, that's why. When they're lower level, you get huge bonuses against them. There we go. Big 10 damage hit. Look at all those skills. It's good. I know there's something there. I'm not going to pick it up. I'm ready to save this game. Hit the hay and finish recording tomorrow. We're at three hours, so this is a long video. Okay, um, there's an item out here. We will pick this one up. Get into the corner. Uh, let's cast some spells. Heal wounds. And 
sleep. All right, so we're awake again. Um, obviously, that pesky light's going to be there for 454 more turns. Um, but we got some stuff now. So, for example, I can fool around with Enchanted Blade. But this is one of those things I want to cast at the beginning of combat. Um, because Enchanted Blade is a must-have in combat. So as much as I can cast it now to just train my stuff, I don't have a lot of spell points. I only have 12. And it's going to cost me 4 every time I use it. So I'm going to wait until combat. And in the first round of combat, I always cast that. Um, the missile shield, though, there's hardly anything that really shoots missiles at us. So just always get those out of the way and everything else is what it is. Like, with the light, we're at power level 3, so now I can try a 4. Look at that. I just got my wizardry and my fire to go up. And unfortunately, I now have an even longer lasting. <laughs> um, so, um... Now turn yellow. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's do a 5. There we go. I just got a... I don't have a power level 5. So, the fact that that's succeeding so much is crazy. Okay, YouTube load me. Here we go, I'm gonna save it. This is my last video of the day. I gotta hit the hay. Um, I'm having a blast. I, I wish I could take tomorrow off work and just keep playing this game. Uh, I love this game so much. I wish the board games I played had this level of character development and um, party management and all that stuff. This is what I'm looking for when I play a D&D or any type of dungeon romping kind of game. Thanks for watching. As always, uh, stay awesome and stay healthy and safe.